as some of you may know from our last episode, uh, I was really ill with a stomach virus, and it started on October 7th. I started to rapidly lose weight because I was no longer eating. And when you're going to the bathroom, like every 30 minutes or so, uh, your body's just losing all of its nutrients as well. So there's a major malnutrition aspect to it, and dehydration starts to set in, and then fatigue. So I went back to the hospital a couple of days ago because I was no longer able to even record the podcast. And that, that's how bad I was feeling. I, I told my boss and my coworkers that I could no longer work. I was like, I at this point, I am completely shutting down. Like, my body is not letting me do anything besides stay in the bed. And I feel like if I continue to do that, I'm going to die. Mm. Um, I felt like what I had was life-threatening. And I told this to the people who reached out to me, my close friends who were really concerned. And they were like, you know, I, we want you to be better. We want you to, like, feel better. But uh, you definitely need to go to the hospital. Like, pretty much everyone was like, hospital. Like, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, okay, I, I agree. Like, at this point, it's been a very long time. Obviously, no one knew how long it had been. But as you see from Kenny's reaction from it starting on October 7th. But yeah. it is now... Because I remember, it's October. You, I remember when you got sick and like, you know, it was just like a, a little stomach virus and it was one of the days we were about to do the podcast and it was like shortly before you were like, Hey, I'm really, really sick. Like I'm, I'm not going to be able to record tonight. And I was like, all right, well, you know, whatever, no big deal. And then like the next time we were going to record, you were like, I'm still fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. But then it's just crazy how a month passes basically. Like, not a yeah. month yet, but it, it, it's basically been a month, and it's like, holy shit. Yeah, it's been a very long time. Um, several weeks now, and it's crazy. So, I went to the hospital, and they immediately took me back and put me in a room. Well, like, I went to the emergency room, to be clear. I went to the emergency room. And normally, emergency rooms, you're, like, waiting and waiting, and I guess depending on how severe your condition is, depends on how fast they, like, move you and, you know... Because obviously someone comes in with like a gunshot wound, they're going to be the first one treated. If somebody comes in and they're like, I'm having heart issues, they're going to be treated high priority. When I came in, I said everything that was wrong with me. They took my vitals. And then the, like the nurse or the emergency room technician, I think is what they're called. They went to a doctor immediately and then they came back and they were like, um, we're going to get you back real real soon so he was like just sit over there for a second i sat for probably four minutes and then they were like frazier smith and they called me and i immediately went back and then they put me in a now the first time i went to the emergency room when i first told them what was going on because i was still like my weight hadn't really fluctuated yet and i was still pretty i guess nourished uh it wasn't really an issue and my vitals looked good too because it was still so early on um, so even though I felt awful to them, they were like, well, your, your vitals and everything look good. So they, it took several hours. In fact, I know exactly how long I got to the emergency room at 11 AM the first time. And I didn't get, I didn't get seen by a doctor until 2 PM. Uh, this time I went to the emergency room and I was seen within a half hour, like all, you know, all things considered, like from walk in until the time when a doctor like officially saw me it was probably a half it actually probably was less it was really fast i just remember being extremely fast i was like holy hell i must be in really bad shape so when a doctor came in they were like hey uh your like protein potassium everything so every, everything's low like you're you're dehydrated and you know er, like everything that all the things that your body needs to function basically are very low so they were like we're going to get you an iv immediately which i fucking hate those things if you don't know what an iv is it's where they stick a really big needle into your arm and that allows them to force uh medicine and liquids into your body so you see them all the time in movies and TV shows, but it's like they're always connected to usually like a long silver metal pole and a, like a little bag that's like dripping into a tube that comes into somebody's body. So I had one of those. Um, I fucking, again, I hate needles. I'm not a fan. 
so I had to get that. And I haven't had an IV in over a decade. When I was younger, I had to get them several times because of my asthma. It was really bad. I had chronic asthma. So I was like born with asthma. And I have like really crazy asthma attacks and stuff. And I guess for whatever reason, they were like, well, got to get you an IV. So as a kid, really dramatic experience with that shit. Um, and now in my adult years, this is the first time I've ever had to get an IV. So once I got that hooked up, they were like, we're going to give you. Uh, medicine to help you with nausea because I was telling them how I was nauseous and I had recently started vomiting. My condition had kept worsening. So at first, my condition was just no appetite. Uh, obviously, going to the bathroom a lot and pretty much like just fatigue and things like that. But then it started to become chills, nausea, and vomiting. And those things are like really, really, really bad. Uh, they're like early onset signs of some terrible things. Uh, I don't even want to, I don't even want to say it, but just know that they're like death type things. So basically the doctors were like, you know, if you waited too long, you would not be here anymore. This is life threatening. They were like, we don't know exactly what's going on with you, but we're going to do a CT scan. So after I'm, I'm hooked up to the IV, they're giving me potassium because they said that. Can I interrupt real quick? Just mm -hmm. one small thing. Something that just sucks, man, is that, and it's not necessarily their fault. It's like you didn't wait too long because you had already gone to the hospital before. You know yes. what I mean? But like you weren't bad enough for them to really recognize that it was that bad. Yes. That's just something that sucks because like you didn't wait too long. You went there, they're like, whatever, just like sleep it off. <laughs> and then like you could have just died. The first one. Yes. The first time they essentially just shrugged it off. They were like, Oh, like let it pass, basically. They were like, Don't take Pepto, don't take Imodium. I was told by a doctor specifically, do not like don't take those things, which you know, that's fair. That's correct. Do not take those because he's like, your body's trying to force out whatever is wrong so i get that that's what like diarrhea is it's your body trying to force out toxins and stuff like that but normally it passes after a couple days um uh, sometimes it can linger a little bit longer but not too much longer this has now when i went to the emergency room the second time to be clear i went back on october 21st i want to say it was and i have first gone on october 7th or no, I first went on October 11th, but the thing started on October 7th. So October 7th to October 21st is exactly 14 days since the illness started. So it had been two weeks of no improvement whatsoever. Like two weeks of just literally suffering. And uh, so when I say things like, you know, if you wait any longer, it's like... Okay, like, I didn't really wait, but after you guys sent me home the first time, I was kind of having anxiety about going back and being sent home again, thinking that I started to have anxiety about thinking I was a little bit crazy. I don't know. It's weird the way your brain works. No, it's fair, though. Ill. I, I, I understand that anxiety, because, like, you went to the doctors, whatever, whatever, and they're like, you're fine. And then so you start being like, well, they said I'm fine. And, like, am I being a little bitch? And, they're like... Like, right. there's things that, it's not just, like, being a little bitch, but there's things that, like, your mind will play tricks, and you're like, R I'm probably just fine. Like, it's not that, you know, and then you just play the mental gymnastics in your head, yeah. and then it just, it becomes a whole I thing. I was like, I really don't want to go back to the mercy room, and they're like, you just have to let it pass, because I'm like, god damn, like, that would, that would be the worst. So, I actually told myself the second time going, you know, just to back up a little bit, I was like, if I go, and they tell me that... I just need to like let it pass or that. If they tried to send me home anyway, I said I wasn't accepting. Yeah, I yeah. literally I literally went there with the mindset that I'm not going home. I pa actually packed my book bag full of things. I brought so much shit with me that I would need. I bought fuck. You're like, I'm staying here overnight. Y'all not giving me a fucking coke and a smile. Like... I think I just realized I left my uh my phone charger. I packed a really long phone charger. I packed uh, underwear, like toothbrush, toothpaste, socks, uh, sweatpants, like all types of things. Because I was ready. I was like, I'm going to be in the hospital for several days. I just know I am. I was like, there's no way they're going to look at my condition now 
me having lost so much weight when i stepped on a scale before going to the emergency room i was frightened i had already dropped 12 pounds and that was scary to me and then looking at my body in the mirror because i'm a pretty small person already so normally like my normal body weight is around 145 let's say is like peak like i'm from 140 to 145 that's like where my body kind of settles at at all times like if i go above it it comes back down if I go below it at all, it always goes back up to it. But 145 is pretty much where I'm at. I'm around, I'm around 5'6", so I'm a pretty short guy. Um, so 145 is great for me. It's like, I look healthy, like no one will question anything. But I had dropped to like the low 130s, and you could see it. My friend who went to the emergency room with me, he as soon as he walked in my apartment, he was like, like, obviously, you look bad, but he was like, you, I could tell with the weight loss. And yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm and sure, I was like, well, I'm... I'm sure everybody listening can tell. When I first got on the call with you, I was like, oh, sh like, you sound, I can hear in your voice that your body's exhausted. Yes. And uh, it's funny because right before we started recording this current episode, I had been in bed. So I actually was napping for, like, the last three hours. And my body is still just so, like, a weak. Yeah, there's no other way to describe it. Like, it's just fucking weak. And I have to take, like, very deep breaths in between um, certain things. But, yeah, so they they said we're going to do a CT scan. So now I have the IV. I'm getting all types of, like, nutrients and stuff. They're trying to get my vitals back up to speed. One of the things that she said that really fucking scared me, I didn't really notice about potassium. So she said your heartbeat is irregular now. And she's like, that is really concerning to us. And your, it's because your potassium levels are so low. And, pota and potassium like regulates some kind of the muscles or something like that she said it, like something about the smoothness or i don't know all the medical terms they use but she basically was saying that you you your body basically needs potassium otherwise it's fucking lights out mm -hmm. so they brought in an entire like pack uh, like a liquid pack of it to put through my iv and then they also gave me pills like potassium pills to take so that must have been like a really severe thing or something because they were very like adamant about that and just like make sure he takes this. You have to watch him take it and all this other stuff. And I'm like, God damn. Um, the pills were huge. So I had to have them like break them up because I was like, there's no way I was like, they were huge. It was two pills. They were gigantic. The biggest pills I've ever seen. Hmm. So they broke them up and uh, I took them. Tasted awful because once you break it, you know, it's like chalky. Yeah, yeah. So I took that. Then he put this fucking... CT scan prep drink in front of me. Now, Kenny, <laughs> when I tell you, I hope that you never, ever have to get a CT scan or anything because the drink they put in front of me was so fucking nasty. So it's a clear liquid, and it's in a, it's in a pretty big water bottle. Um, like, bigger than a, bigger than a natural size bottle of water, it's definitely more than like 12 ounces. It's it was a pretty big amount. And they were like, we need you to down all of this uh like in a pretty quick amount of time. Like we need you to down this pretty fast because we're gonna take you to get a CT scan. Now this is all this is all happening. So if everything's happening fast. Like did, I must be literally dying. Now I, I already know I'm dying because the way I feel. But the way they're all behaving and the way all these different physicians and stuff are they're coming into my room. And I'm meeting all these different people, all these different nurses and doctors. I mean, just so many. And they keep on coming in and doing all these checks. And I'm like, damn, like, how many people are going to see me? They're like, I'm Dr. This, I'm Dr. That. I don't remember any of their names. Like, they keep on coming in and just introducing new people. And they're like, I do this. I specialize in this. I specialize in that. And they're like, I'm sorry, you feel this way. We just need to check this. And so it was a lot. Like, I was being worked on by a lot of different people. Anyway, like, so I have One this... of you motherfuckers better know what's going on. Yes. <laughs> so, and the crazy. Hey guys, if you like this clip, we have full video versions of our podcast episodes available on the I Am There Patreon, as well as exclusive content. If you'd like to listen to our full podcast episodes or find us on any other social media platforms, you can do so by clicking the link tree below.